Celebrating 16 years of Young Turks. Hello and welcome to this very special edition of Young Turks where we're talking about the opportunities for investment in the Indian startup space with three investors who see India as a bright spot in a world of grey. On the face of it, in 2017 it appeared to be a good year for funding compared to the last three years. As of December 2017, Indian startups raised a total of a little over $10 billion versus about $4.5 billion in 2016. But it was the consumer internet unicorns that cornered a lion's share of the inflows and it was Japanese conglomerate SoftBank held by Masayoshi Son who played kingmaker. Now, according to a Grant Thornton report, private equity investments also hit an all-time high of $21 billion in 2017. So what does the picture look like going forward? Join me now on the show today, Nanda Nilikani and Sanjeev Agarwal, the founding partners of the $100 million growth stage fund, Fundamentum Partnership, and Michael Sabia, the president and CEO of one of Canada's largest pension funds, CDPQ, which has invested $20 million in Fundamentum. CDPQ globally manages about $250 billion in assets under management. And this is their first investment in a VC fund in India. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18, and congratulations on getting this deal done. Mr. Sabia, if I could start by asking you, why did you decide on Fundamentum as your first investment in the VC space in India? Well, this is part of a larger commitment uh, that we're making to invest, uh, invest in India, one of the most attractive uh, countries in the world, we think, um, to, to invest in today. And I say that because India presents almost a unique combination of uh, tremendous entrepreneurial skills and great, great technological skills, as you see in the uh, digitization that's going on in the Indian economy today. So the partnership uh, that mm -hmm. we're establishing uh, today with Fundamentum is a lot about giving us access um, to that combination of entrepreneurship and technology where we think that there are very big opportunities uh, for India and, and very big opportunities for ourselves. The other thing I think I'd say, one of the things that really struck us um, about the approach that Fundamentum has, the fund is in the business mm. of building businesses, of building businesses to last. Right. And that's uh, a very central part of how we think about investing as we go around the world investing. It's about building things, it's about building durable enterprises, and that's at the core of, 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 the, uh, of the objectives of Fundamentum. Nandan, uh, let me come to you now. Uh, congratulations, A, on getting this deal done. Uh, you know, it's, uh, we still haven't seen Fundamentum make its first investment yet. Uh, when can we expect that? Uh, you've obviously gone through the process of identifying potential companies that you could partner with, you could invest in. Uh, what looks good at this point? Well, we have yet to make our first announcement. That is correct, and we hope to do that uh, soon. Uh, we have gone through uh, maybe over 100 companies in the last uh, few months. We have a very uh, exacting process uh, of selection. We diagnose the companies. We spend a lot of time with the founders. We look for people who have the market, the momentum, the you know, maturity to deal with what we need. So it, it is a, it's a process, but I'm confident now we have, uh, in the next few months, you'll see a couple of investments uh, from us. And what is exciting to us is that once we make the investment, we hope to bring our collective mm. expertise on technology, on, on HR, on leadership development, on marketing, on strategy, on distribution, on sales, uh, on quality, all these old-fashioned things that are required to build a business. And mm -hmm. we're going to bring that expertise to our selected companies to help them scale up rapidly. Okay, uh, you know, the last, uh, when we spoke, when you did set up Fundamentum London, you had spoken about how uh, you're looking at the possibility of uh, investing on an average about $15 million in the startup that you would like to back. Uh, uh, is that the average ticket size that you're still working with? Well, it, it could be anywhere from, you know, 8 to 15 kind of thing. We, we are looking at maybe maximum two or three companies in a year because it's not about quantity, it's about quality. And it's about selecting these hmm. uh, 10, 15 companies in the fund and then working with them and helping them to scale up. And we also expect that as they scale up, 
uh, we expect that if they have more capital requirements, then we would perhaps go back to CDPQ because we're seeing this as a whole life cycle approach to these companies. So what we have started announced okay. today with uh, Michael and CDPQ is really the first step of what we think is a longer term relationship. I think this point, if I could just jump in okay. on this, I, I think this point that, that, that Nanan's just made is really important uh, because you mentioned before a $20 million contribution on our part, which is true, uh, but that's really just the beginning of a much broader relationship. Uh, mm. One of the things that we're looking for here and that interests us is that as these companies grow, they will require additional capital and therefore it's not just the fundamental platform itself, which is the starting point, but as companies, if I can put it this way, graduate in size as they grow, then that will create opportunities for us to continue to accompany them as a financial partner as we invest more mm -hmm. and more in the growth of those businesses. Uh, you know, so as you pointed out, Mr. Sabia, that this is only the, the beginning of this relationship that you have with Fundamentum, and if required, you could look at investing significantly more than the 20 million that you've committed to today. Uh, but would that also mean that you could look at other VCs in India, or would this uh, be restricted to your relationship with Fundamentum? Well, the uh, first point I'll make is as, a, as, a, as an element of our investment philosophy, we tend not to invest in a lot of funds. We manage 90% uh, of our assets ourselves with our own investment teams. So when we select a fund to work with, it's, it's on a very, very, it's very, very surgical process in our minds. Um, we've, we've decided to work um, with Fundamentum uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, both, num number one, the quality um, and the great, great capabilities of the two people I'm sitting beside, which speaks for themselves, mm. I think, uh, those qualities speak for themselves in, 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 in India. And the second point is just a, 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 an extremely good, extremely strong meeting of minds on what is this really about? Mm. Because this is not about just funding startups, because uh, in fact that's not the goal. The goal is to take businesses that are operating and that we all think yeah. have the potential uh, to become substantial, large businesses mm. in their own right and to fund the growth and development of those businesses and to provide them with the kind of operating and business skills that you need to turn a small business into a great big business. So it's, the, it's that similarity of mindset and similarity of objective that mm. has led us uh, to want to do this. As to whether or not we would engage with, with other um, funds, I, I don't think this. I don't think Fundamentum is really a venture capital fund in my mind, but I think we would we would probably be uh, quite hesitant to do so, given that we uh, that we don't okay. tend to invest in funds a lot. So this relationship we're establishing with uh, Nandan and with San Sanjeev is really a, a, a unique relationship. Okay, Sanjeev, uh, I want to pick up on the point that Nandan made that you've uh, looked at over 100 companies or so uh, since you decided to set up Fundamentum. Uh, you haven't made your first investment just yet and you hope to be able to do that over the next few months. What, if I may ask, has held you back? I mean, obviously you've seen a lot of companies with potential, but you and I have spoken of, uh, of an issue that, that, that has concerned you, and that is the ability of Indian startups to scale up as well as to replicate their business model. Has that been a constraint on your decision to invest so far? I think, Shireen, a couple of uh, responses there. One, since we want to build a very concentrated portfolio. Uh, we want to make sure that we do the right curation around uh, entrepreneurs who want to build large businesses in large uh, markets. So mm -hmm. unlike the early stage uh, funding business, which tends to be about optionality and making several optional bets, we are in this with the company for long haul. And therefore, the uh, assessment process is a lot more uh, detailed uh, than a startup because okay. we are committing our capital and time. Two, I think the hmm. uh, I have certainly seen personally cleansing of the ecosystem uh, from what it was two, three years back to now. Now, I think the focus on customer unit economics. 
building a culture and uh, do it for long haul versus building companies mm. for valuation and exits. I think that transition is certainly uh, underway and the entrepreneurs okay. who are coming uh, into the fray are a lot more uh, committed. So I don't think we are opportunity uh, constrained. It's just that we want to be uh, okay. very selective in whom we work with, both in terms of uh, mm -hmm. chemistry and people who want our help in building an institution. We are going to take a break, but when we return, we'll talk to uh, Michael Sabia, the CEO of CDPQ, on their India investment plans outside of Fundamentum. What's looking exciting? Uh, where are they going to put their money? That and more when we return. Stay tuned. You're watching the CNBC TV 18 exclusive. Celebrating 16 years of Young Turks.